Hi guys, gals, and music pals, it's Miss Thrift Wench. This is day three of you guys doing e-learning and day two of me being home and day two of us reading some music history stories and learning about some composers. So I'm back with Lives of the Musicians. I forgot to tell you the authors yesterday. Their names are Kathleen Curl and Catherine Hewitt. And I really kind of like the pictures because they're these big like bobble-headed versions. <laughs> of the composers. I'm really just now noticing that. But the book is Lives of the Musicians, Good Times, Bad Times, and What the Neighbors Thought. So um, today we are reading about Mr. Johann Sebastian Bach. And this is what some of his music sounds like. <clears throat> so um, this tune probably sounds a little familiar to you guys. A lot of music from what is known as the classical style is used in a lot of places in movies and TV shows and commercials and that sort of thing. Um, there's two kinds of classical music. There's capital C classical, which means it's from the classical time period. And then there's little c classical, which means it's instrument based. It's typically much older. Um, it's very different than what you usually listen to. So this is Little C Classical. I'm going to have to double check myself because I feel like he was not capital C Classical, but I'll have to look at a timeline. Um, so let's go in with Mr. Johann Sebastian Bach. It says 20 children and 1,200 compositions. How he wrote that many compositions with 20 kids is beyond me. I can barely get a room clean and I have only two. So he was born in Germany in 1685 and he also died in Germany in 1750. Um, he didn't move very far from where he was born so he was a German organist which means he played the organ and great composer best known for the Brandenburg concertos, the Goldberg variations, and the well-tempered clavier. I'm gonna turn this down because I think it's about to get loud. Okay, I was wrong. There's a part where it gets really loud. It scared me earlier. As a young music teacher, Bach was out walking one night when six of his students attacked him. They wanted an apology. Bach had called one of them a nanny goat bassoonist, someone who makes a bassoon sound like a goat. But Bach wouldn't take it back. He fought back in self-defense. Luckily, the fight was broken up before anyone was really hurt. All his life, Bach had trouble with people who didn't see things his way. He once wanted to quit a job, but his employer, a duke, wanted him to stay. Bach was so insistent that the duke threw him in jail. But here's the difference between Bach and the average stubborn person. During the month he spent in jail, Bach wrote 46 pieces of music. Music that we still listen to 300 years later. How could Johann Sebastian Bach have ever thought of becoming anything but a musician? He, his is the largest family tree in music. Almost all his male relatives were musicians. Some 76 in all, 53 of them named Johann. Imagine if you had 53 relatives with the same first name as you. Getting your name called at a family reunion would be interesting. Anyway, Bach's mother read him Bible stories and his father taught him violin, sometimes late into the evening. But both parents had died by the time Bach turned 10 and he went to live with a brother. Bach was able to support himself before he was 15. He sang and took organ playing jobs in towns near enough to walk to. Bach was always a very dedicated musician, even if it meant blisters. Once he walked 200 miles just to hear the great organist Diedrich... Hang on, I got it. Buck to Huda play. So he went, he walked 200 miles. Put this into perspective, to drive 40 miles-ish takes about an hour. In a car, 40 miles. He walked 200, one way, to go hear somebody play. Bach spent his whole life in one small part of Germany. He was married twice, first to Maria Barbara, and after she died, to Anna Magdalena, who was a good singer and keyboard player. Anna helped Bach in his work so much that her handwriting came to look just like his. Bach produced 1,200 musical works and had 20 children, though only 10 lived to be adults. Five were named 
there's that loud part that scared me. <laughs> Five were named Johan. Two, Johanna. And four grew up to be compos famous composers themselves. In his free time at night, Buck would sit in his armchair smoking his pipe with a baby Bach on his lap as his wife and children played and sang. Bach loved food and coffee. Once he wrote a whole cantata about coffee. Among his most prized possessions were two silver coffee pots. There's the coffee pots. They're really fancy. They're a lot different than the curie. <laughs> Bach was known as a dazzling organist. His strong legs pumped the pedals, his large hands performed acrobatics on the keyboard, and he'd even use a stick in his mouth to reach certain notes. But he wasn't a show-off. He said of his playing, there is nothing remarkable about it. All you have to do is hit the right key at the right time, and the instrument plays itself. Later in life, Bach went blind, probably from copying out his own music in poor light for so many years. He died at the age of 65. Hardly any of his music was published when he was alive, nor did he expect it to be. Bach did not think he was writing music for posterity. He was a professional. His music had an immediate purpose. Not until about a hundred years after his death did the genius of Bach begin to be widely recognized. In the little musical notes section, it says Bach wrote the Goldberg Variations to relax a millionaire. One of his pupils, Johann Goldberg, Johann was a popular name back then. It's the German version of John, so... Johann Goldberg worked for an insomniac count who needed music to get to sleep. If you're an insomniac, that means you have trouble sleeping. You can't go to sleep. The count sent the most generous payment Bach ever received. I would hope it was generous if he was a millionaire. Imagine if you had to do something for a millionaire and they gave you a generous payment. Imagine, think about what you could buy. The famous two-part inventions, or ideas, were written for Bach's children to exercise each finger and train the hands to play independently. So the two inven two-part inventions, it literally made you use, this is my left. It made you use your left hand independent of your right hand while playing the piano. And for a lot of people, that's really, really hard to do. I struggle with it very, very much, and attest that's part of why I'm meant to be a flute player and not a piano player um but these exercises are still used today in training the hands when you're playing piano the brandenburg concertos were a sort of job application to a court official of brandenburg bach didn't get the job but his concertos are, are today among the best known instrumental works of this entire period marion ziegler a poet who had published three books supplied the words for several of Bach's works. In working with her, Bach was ahead of his time, for women were allowed no public role in creating or performing music. Think about that, 300 years ago, I couldn't have taught you music. I couldn't have been a musician, because I'm a girl. That's not fair. Anyway, the two Voyager spacecrafts launched into the solar system in 1977, so before I was born, um, <clears throat> before my parents were even married. That was a hot minute ago. They were launched into the solar system. They contained three pieces by Bach, along with special record-playing equipment. So we've literally launched Bach's music into space, and he didn't even think it would be published. So it's kind of cool. Um, tomorrow we'll take a listen and a look at Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. You probably recognize the name Mozart. I will be playing a piece of music of his that I'm sure you will recognize because his music gets used a lot. Um, so I hope you enjoyed today's little story. I miss you guys. I'm starting to go stir crazy in my house. I am starting to clean obsessively because there's not a whole lot else to do once the virtual schoolwork is done. But I miss you guys. I hope everybody's staying happy, healthy. I hope you are finding joy in every day. Um, those of you, oh boy, that's my cue to wrap this up because the baby is crying. So, until tomorrow, guys, gals, and my music pals.